know that he's reaching for the kneecaps of Baptist Church in Bristol, Tennessee. Sounds kind of strange to me to say here, but uh, that's how it is, <laughs> notwithstanding. I would like to, you can turn to 2 Timothy chapter number 2, but as you are, I'd like to thank the Grace Baptist Church for inviting me to come and preach, Brother Pop Proctor and the graciousness and love that you've shown toward me and us, and on a personal note, for your prayers, cards, calls, and kind words of encouragement during my wife's recent battle with cancer. Uh, God has done exceeding and abundant. Now, that shouldn't surprise us, but it did. <laughs> I don't know how else to say. I'll, I'll join the saints of old, and Lord, I believe, but I sure could use some help with my unbelief. But when the, the last time she visited the surgeon who removed her kidney, he said to her, you do not know how good you're doing. And uh, many here have prayed for her. And we want to give God the glory for his goodness and thank you for your love and God's blessings in so many ways. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 10 Living the life as a sovereign grace Baptist. The Apostle Paul knew something about that, for he were one. And we rejoice that God used him to bring into being our ancestors, churches that we spring from. And if we knew and could trace our lineage, we would go back through this apostle to the Gentiles and the church that churches that God blessed him to plant, organize with authority from the church at Antioch. And I rejoice in that and praise God for that. But he believed far more, I'm convinced, than any of us can comprehend the sovereign grace of God Almighty. He lived it, he bled it, he suffered for it, and I believe he gave himself to spend and be spent to promote and preach the Lord Jesus Christ, him crucified, raised from the dead, and what a sovereign God that we serve, and how his grace was free and fully delivered. But even with all that the Apostle Paul believed, here's the practical aspect I can convince, and that's what I want to deal with today. I am going to take for granted, perhaps I shouldn't, but I'm going to take for granted that at least the majority of the audience here today believe in what we know as the doctrines of God's sovereign grace. Amen. I'm going to assume that. Now, if I don't, and you think this sounds strange, well, find about any, anyone around here and they'll be glad to talk to you a little while and you never can tell. God might teach us something together. But the Apostle Paul said in verse 10 of 2 Timothy 2, Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Amen. Living a life as a sovereign grace Baptist. And I thought that and I realized, well, that's the only kind of Baptist that there is. Right. That's the only Baptist there's ever been. Amen. And that's the only Baptist there'll ever be. All these who claim to be Baptists and do not hold to, preach, practice, promote the doctrines of sovereign grace are liars. And will be found so at the day of judgment of the Lord Jesus Christ. While many others wear the name Baptist, they are synagogues of Satan. Preacher, that sounds awfully strong. Well, I want you to understand how I believe about sovereign grace, Baptist. And I rejoice in that. Every true 
doctrine that God's word holds has a practical effect upon us, and if it does not, then we have not learned what God has ordained that the doctrines do to us. Because doctrine just means teaching. And if we have something that we embrace and hold to as a doctrine and it doesn't teach us how to live, then we need to re-examine it and see wherein we fell short. The Apostle Paul says, I endure all things. Why, Paul? You would suffer 39 lashes five different times from the Jews? Why, Paul, you would be beaten with rods, stoned, shipwrecked, spend a day and a night in the sea? Why, Paul, you would journey, you'd be in peril here, there, and yonder, everywhere you went? Why, Paul, you would suffer all these things, and why in the world would you do that? Because I believe in the sovereign grace of Almighty God. Because I trust that what has fallen unto me has fallen unto me by order of he who loved me. How about that? That the things that I have suffered, I have suffered for righteousness' sake, and the blessing shall be mine as a result thereof. I am persuaded that the Apostle Paul would say, I rejoice in my sufferings. I praise God for my sufferings. I would that I could have suffered more for he who suffered so much for me. Would he not say, even if all that I have suffered and all that I have done and endured for the elect's sake, for the glory of God, why, I'm the very least of them all. And I'm not even fit or worthy to be called an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have done things that I wish I hadn't done, but I can't get them out of my mind. Now, I would ask you this today. What have we done? What are we enduring for the elect's sake? What does this sovereign grace that we hold so dear, crossing every I, dotting every T, what has it done to us? I was speaking to a man of the opposite persuasion just this past week. And he said, well, if you're right, why aren't you out there getting everyone and telling it everywhere? Now, what do you say to that? Huh? I said, well, the failure of the servant doesn't change the truth of the master. That's all I knew to say. I sure couldn't say anything because I knew I wasn't doing that. And I also added, but I should. We should. We should. We sit back on our laurels so many times with the idea, well, if they're going to be saved, they're going to be saved. What did the Apostle Paul say? He didn't say, I'm an Arminian. He said, I endure the things I endure for one group of people. The elect. The elect. Why? Why? That they may obtain it. They didn't have it. <laughs> he endured for those who were saved, but he endured for those who were to be saved. All these things also. How should we as a quickened member of a sovereign grace Baptist church, how should we live our life. Well, I could just say as a living sacrifice, couldn't I, and say that'll cover it. But then break it a little bit down into where we live. How many here believe total depravity? I won't ask for your hand. I don't want to put you on the spot. But now I'm serious now. How many really believe total depravity? That every person that's born to the seed of Adam ever has been or ever shall be comes forth from the womb as dead spiritually as any corpse that has ever been planted on this planet earth how many really believe that I, I said how many really believe that 
No, I didn't say how many do head knowledge to that. I didn't say how many go where that's preached. I said how many believe that. If you believe that, then there's only one thing if you're a missionary Baptist, and I won't get on that wherever our brother's at, but there's only one thing that God has put upon this earth that he has ordained that would have power to change that dead one. Now you think about this. I thought about this. Doctor walks in and tells uh, Judy that she has cancer. It's, it's on her right thigh. It's in her left lung. The right kidney's got to be totally removed. He said, "Now there's the problem. I'll pray for you." And go on home. Turn on his TV. Sit back with his feet up, enjoy his R and R, occupy and busy himself with everything in the world except her need. Now there was nothing going to do this but cut it out. That's just the bottom line. They just said plain this type of cancer chemotherapy won't touch. Won't touch it. None that they have today will do anything with it. The knife was the only hope and some radiation in her lung because that was a place they just couldn't even do surgery. Things didn't look so good. Seemed a little gloom. Well, how gloom does it look to you when you see someone without Jesus Christ? How gloom does that look to you? When you see someone... I tell you, it ought to break more than just our very beings to see someone who has lived a long life, their hair is either all white or gone, and they're just sitting around cursing, drinking, living a life of sin. Well, no matter what age they are, but it certainly tires me when they're that age. And, and I, you know, old folk m or must die, and the young ones might. I mean, that's just the way it is. Sin's going to take a toll on this body sooner or later. And the only hope that they have, now this is true whether you believe it or not, is that someone care enough about them to communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ. If someone doesn't do that, they will die in their sins and in hell they'll shut their eyes. Preacher, I thought you believed in sovereign grace. I do, that's why I believe that. I believe in total depravity. My hope's not that they might someday turn to God. My hope is that someday that God will turn them. And in order for that to happen, don't worry with trying to tell me what God could do. I weary. I weary with people trying to explain to me what God could do. Well, I, I don't know. Except whatever he wants to. And I know this, I've not learned everything that he's revealed of what he has done and what he's going to do and is doing in his word and until I know everything about that, I'm not too concerned about what he might or could or would have. Amen. And I do know that he has said that it pleased him through the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Amen. And I know that he has said that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. And I know the Apostle Paul said, you may have 10,000 instructors, but in Christ Jesus you have but one Father. I have begotten you with the gospel. Now, if we believe in total depravity, then we ought to be willing to endure some things for the elect's sake as a member of the church of Jesus Christ. As a member of the church of Jesus Christ, if we believe the doctrines of God's sovereign grace, we can go fish with a license. <laughs> Think about that, but I'll pass on that. Okay, brother? <laughs> we won't be poachers. <laughs> we can go fish with a license in a stock pond. 
knowing that there's some uh, souls in there who have been redeemed. And that God's word, his gospel, will be effectual in the place where unto he sent it. And that he that started that good work will continue to perform that good work unto the day of Jesus Christ. And even if we never see anything come of our enduring all things for the elect's sake, we will still, when we are faithful to go forth and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, we will then be a sweet savor of Christ unto God in those that live or are saved and in those that perish. Same savor. Same savor. It's not the results that makes us obedient to God. At least it surely ought not to be. That's in God's hands. Right, Sovereign Grace Baptist? <laughs> the result's in God's hands. It is our responsibility to go and sow. And that's the way we ought to be as member of the Sovereign Grace Baptist Church. And then as a Sovereign Grace Baptist Church body, how should we live the life? Well, if every member lived the life as they ought to, the church would be living the life too, wouldn't it? I mean, that just comes without saying. But how do we live the life as a New Testament church? Conducting our services, our all the things that we do as far as reaching out to this one or that one or there or yonder or doing this or doing that or whatever, how do we do these things? How do we live as a church? And what should our functions be? I believe that the church should conduct her actions in light of all the things that we've said about each individual member, number one, and second, it is my firm conviction, and if you think I'm wrong, I'll pray for you, and you pray for me, but it's going to be hard to change this with me. It is my firm conviction that a Sovereign Grace Baptist church should use Sovereign Grace Baptist, and I'll put a period right there. I don't want to see Jerry Falwell in a Sovereign Grace Baptist Church preaching or anyone like him. Well, we don't have enough Sovereign Grace preachers. Well, then some of you men step up to the plate and at least read the Word of God. Don't give up the truth because it gets tough. Sovereign Grace Baptist Church that will promote, advertise, or in any way proclaim the glory of an enemy of the Church of Jesus Christ, I got a problem. The Church of the Lord Jesus Christ is a special enmity to him. He loved it so much that he gave himself for it and purchased it with his own blood. He has a special place in eternity reserved for the faithful members thereof. And now you want to say that he doesn't care how we conduct ourselves? And that we are not to hold ourselves to a higher standard than anyone else in this world? In every way? I'm convinced that as Sovereign Grace Baptist church to be the greatest church in the world it is and that every member ought to be the greatest person in the world in every way in every way there's no reason for anyone to be ahead of a sovereign grace baptist church member. we use the sovereign grace baptist for teachers for preachers for singers for serving god in his church serving god in his church the Sovereign Grace Baptist Church should not utilize, depend, nor make practice of using sad stories, gimmicks, emotional appeals, 
poems, songs, or long drawn anything thinking that that's where the power of God is. You know, I've heard people, preachers say things like that the invitation is the most important part of the service. If it is, you don't have a service. You've not had church, if that's true. The most important, have you ever read anywhere in the Word of God that uh, he says, now the closing song is the power of God and salvation. You ever read that? And yet they want to make out that that's the, the most important part of any service has got to be the Word of God. Because that is Jesus Christ. He is the living Word. And what we've got here is the written Word. Friends, we need to treat this like it is. This is Christ manifesting Himself. This is Him. You can't have Him the preeminence and the Word of God not be the preeminence. And that's how Sovereign Grace Baptist Church ought to present it and view it and demand that it be. Sovereign Grace Baptist Church must, and I said that word, didn't I? Well, let me weaken it down and say should. Only support missionaries and mission work of life, faith, like precious faith and practice. Now, I've got a problem with places that will support missionaries that they wouldn't let preach in their pulpit. What? Well, what do you think they're preaching wherever you're helping them preach? If they're not fit to preach for you, surely they shouldn't be supported by you. There is no shortage of song, sovereign grace, Baptist mission works in this world. There's no shortage of those. We sit back here and we think, I want to hear the what's going on, what they're doing, how much of this is done, how much of that's done. You know what the Apostle Paul said? I didn't keep no record. I don't really know who I baptized, who I didn't baptize. Because to tell you the truth, God didn't send me to baptize anyway. That's the truth now. And yet we're so impressed when someone comes around and tells us there's been this many hundreds or thousands or whatever it is. And that's fine. I'm glad God's blessing and using them. But I want to hear what they preach. I want to hear where they're from. I want to know what church sent them, what that church believes, where that church came from. Huh? That's living the life as a sovereign grace Baptist church. Putting to practice what you say you believe. Sovereign grace Baptist churches should fellowship, now get this point, in a church capacity with sovereign grace Baptist churches. And I got another period. I got another period right there. Sovereign Grace Baptist Church, I won't say, have no reason taking anything wet for baptism. Now, I'm going to tell you something. There is no difference between free will immersion than Methodist sprinkling as far as baptism is concerned. One's just as valid in heaven as the other one. It is. And it don't matter if you method sprinkle the baby or if the one who was immersed by that free wheeler was saved. They're both just as valid a baptism in heaven. Where am I at? Oh, well, I see that. Three or four minutes. Well, okay. <laughs> you just know what you're doing. Only as a church practices what they preach does the membership, do they really learn. That's where, you really, that's where you really learn. It's one thing to have a knowledge in your head about it, but what does it mean to me in my life that I live? Far too many of Satan's counterfeits have been acknowledged as true churches of the Lord Jesus Christ, and such a thing ought not to be. 
May it be pleasing to the God who enables us, taught us, and helps us to hold the truth in righteousness to stay the course. What is it that Brother Powell says? To keep on keeping on. Knowing that our labor will not be in vain in the Lord. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Powell. Oh, yeah? Thank you, Brother.